So here is the correction of the exercise concerning the computable general equilibrium model, where three goods are introduced into the model. So uh, we always start with uh, comments between the instructions dollar on text and dollar of text. Um, and so the major innovation concern the uh, introductions of three sectors. So this change is achieved by uh, declaring a set called I, and this set contains three sectors, agriculture, industry, and services. We use the alias instruction in order to be able to call by two different names the, the set consisting of the three sectors. So the names will be I and J. Um, then I declare parameters. So uh, first exogenous variables, for example, the labor supply and the capital supply. Second, I also declare uh, parameters corresponding to the initial value of endogenous variables of the model. So this uh, parameter starts with the name of the variable and end with the zero. And finally, I declare uh, technical parameters, in particular those related to the Leontief functions and the Cobb-Douglas function. So let us note that we have a few new variables like value added, price of value added, intermediate consumption, intermediate total intermediate consumption, consum intermediate consumptions of good I in sector J, and so on. Um, now, data entry. So uh, we have here uh, the de declarations of a table and the definitions of a table. And this table is called MCS. And uh, this table, of course, uh, corresponds to a social accounting matrix. But here there is a, a contraction of the matrix that you found in the Excel sheet, because instead of having three production columns and three activity columns corresponding to the three sectors, we've got only one series of three columns. And same things for the rows. We have only one series of rows corresponding to agriculture, industry, and services. That is why I speak of a contracted matrix, and I let you find uh, the interpretations of these figures by comparing the GAMS program that you have here with the Excel files, the Excel sheet that we, uh, that we have attached on the platform. So thanks to this uh, MCS uh, table, I can enter data. So uh, I only enter data on the demand for primary factors, that is to say demand by sector for capital and for labor. And also I enter data concerning intermediate consumption of good I by a sector J. Then I can proceed to normalizations. Um, so, normalizations are changes of unit for each good of the model in such a way that I end up with prices equal to 1. So, I have three goods, uh, the output, uh, agriculture, industry and services. I have also two primary factors, so first normalizations concerning the goods, then two normalizations concerning primary factors. And I also have in the model two composite goods, value added and total intermediate consumption. So this is why I proceed to five normalization. Then I can calibrate the model here. So I enter all the parameters necessary for the model to work. Since I have the demands for capital and the demands for labor, uh, I can calibrate labor supply and capital supply. Uh, 
then since I have also the prices of primary factors, I can calibrate uh, the added value because the added value is uh, defined by uh, the prices of primary factors, W0 and R0, the demand for factors in each sector, uh, LD0 and KD0 in sector I, and the composite price of value added, uh, for which I have uh, given a value of 1, and so on. Um, at the end of the calibration, I must be sure that I have given value to all parameters of the model. I must be sure that each time I used parameter to which I had already given values. And finally, I must be sure that the equations of the models are respected. So, Calibration is an important part of the model and you have to do it by first entering some data from the social accounting matrix and then comparing what are what the data that you have entered within the model to the equations of the model. And so with this comparison, calibration is feasible. Then I declare the variables here uh, and uh, also uh, so these are the variables of the previous models but you've got also new variables such uh, as value added price of value added total intermediate consumption composite price of total intermediate consumption intermediate consumption of good i by sector j and utility of the representative consumer. Then I initialize the variables. Indeed, for the model to work well, it is necessary to give value to each variable. And since the model must perfectly describe the initial economic reality, it is necessary to initialize the variables on perfectly calibrated values. That is to say, values such that all the equations of the model are perfectly respected. Then I declare the equations. I am, remind you that I use at the equation name the acronym EQ underscore, followed by the name of the variables that these equations determines. So here is the model. First, I have a production block with three subcomponents, a first level Leontief, a second level Cobb de Glass, and a second level Leontief. So, uh, the first level Leontief reflects a proportional relationship in volume between value added and production, but also between total intermediate consumption and production. It means that if we want to increase production in volume, we must increase value added in volume and intermediate consumption in volume proportionally. The third equation uh, means uh, that in fact the production price is a weighted average of the composite price of value added and the composite price of total intermediate consumption. Then we have a cup de glass for value added. This means that the value share of capital in value added is constant. The same goes for labor. If we have the last two equations, uh, in fact, we see that the price of value added is a weighted average of the price of capital and the price of labor. Then we have Leontief between intermediate consumptions of good I in sector J and total intermediate consumption by sector J. The income block doesn't change. 
the little the demon block is a little bit different since we have uh, in fact three goods so uh, utility is a cup de glass of uh, these three goods and uh, in fact the value share of each good in the budget allocated to consumption is constant the budget allocated to consumption is inc this is the income then we have the market equilibrium block labor market equilibrium capital market equilibrium and goods market equilibrium so this last equation is different from the previous model because on the supply side we have a production in sector i domestic production in sector i on the demand side we have final consumptions by households and intermediate consumptions by firms then the model is defined under the title under the name macro underscore prod i set the numeraire uh, which is the price of the agricultural good then i ask for a first solve in order to check that the initial infeasibility is nil then i store some parameters uh, so these are parameters on which i want to uh, operate a shock so you see that i propose different shock here but I activate only one, of course, and in order to keep information on the initial value of these parameters, I declare a parameter which is the name of this parameter ended by underscore. So it's what we call a buffer parameter. And so after that, you can ask for the final, the, the value of Ks and compare it to Ks underscore. Uh, when you want to uh, remember what was the initial value of the parameters that you have changed. Then uh, what I'm uh, doing here is that I'm studying the impact of an increase in capital supply by 10%. Finally, after the shock, I ask for a calculation of a certain number of parameters. These are rate of growth, of production, of prices, of income, of consumption. And also I ask for the calculations of cons uh, consumption price index. So the formula is here and you will see that this is a Fisher index because it's a geometric average of a Lasper index and of a Pash index. So to run the model, uh, I press the button run. And so here I am in the process window. So you see that the first solve starts with an initial infeasibility, which is very close to zero. So it means that the model is well calibrated. Then the second solve starts with uh, an initial infeasibility of 600. So this is normal. This is because, in fact, now capital supply has changed. And so there are some equations that are no more respected. In 12 equations, you see in 12 iterations, you see that GAMS has found a solution to uh, this square system. So what I can do is to look at uh, the results. I can start with uh, model statistics by double clicking on model statistics. You see that now it's a system of 40 independent equations and 40 free variables. If I look at the results, you see that in fact there is an increase in the capital stock which leads to an increase in the uh, remunerations of labor and a decrease in the remunerations of capital. So it's normal because there is more capital in the economy. So there is an increase in the supply of capital, which results in a decrease of its remunerations. 
So concerning labor, it's really easy to understand the increase. This is because, in fact, there is a constant quantity of uh, labor, a constant number of workers. And so each worker has more capital as a or his disposal. So more machines, more computers, more trucks. And so it means that workers become more productive and so their remuneration increases. So you also see that there is an increase in the production in each sector, but the, the rate of growth differs from one sector to the other. This is because, in fact, these are sectors with different capital intensity. Finally, if I uh, double click on the left on the first equation, well, you see that here you do not have any infeasibility. So this is the first solve. Here you've got an infeasibility, but you see that it's a very, very small infeasibility. So it is equivalent to a zero infeasibility. Here also you have a, an infeasibility which is very limited. So it means that the first solve starts with uh, an infeasibility which is zero. If you look at the second equation, so you see that the first equation you do not have infeasibility. Here this is a very small infeasibility. Here same thing. So here you see that there is an infeasibility which is 300. So it's normal because it's the equations, formations of income where you have the capital supply and the capital supply is changed. Here you do not have an infeasibility, no infeasibility. And here you have again an infeasibility of 300. And this is normal because it's the equations equilibrium on capital market. So you have identified where what are the equations where you have an, infe yeah, an initial uh, infeasibility.